Hello, my name is John Broadwell. I'm an independent consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, where I do work on embedded systems and medical devices. If you need help with one of those areas, then uh, look me up. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the latest pin modes for the Serial Wombat 18AB open source project. Uh, this corresponds to firmware version 2.1. So if your Serial Wombat chip has an earlier firmware version, you can find that by running the Wombat Finder application in the examples under Arduino. Uh, you'll want to do an update. If you take a look at the link up above, uh, it will show you how to update your Serial Wombat 18AB chip to the latest firmware. That's very important. So we're going to be taking a look today at the PS2 keyboard reader, uh, which is a keyboard that predated the current USB batch of keyboards for use with the IBM PS2 computer. Uh, it's still occasionally used in high security environments and uh, in industrial environments, but for the most part has been supplanted by USB. However, it is very easy relative to USB to implement on a microcontroller. So I added functionality to the Serial Wombat 18AB in case you wanted to add a keyboard to your Arduino or other embedded systems project. So the connector, you can see the Wikipedia page, uh, looks like this. There's six pins. Out of those, we use four, ground, plus five volts and clock and data. And we'll look later at how to connect one of these up. I'd highly recommend getting a breakout board from Amazon or AliExpress or one of those kind of places that makes your job a lot easier. So if you go into the Arduino and you've already downloaded the Serial Wombat 18, uh, the Serial Wombat Arduino library, go to examples, Serial Wombat, 18AB and PS2 keyboard. There's three examples under there that we'll be using. So here's the first one. Let's take a look real quick at the hardware setup that we're going to be using for these examples. So let's take a look at our hardware setup here. We've got a USB cable that's coming in from the PC that we'll use to program our Arduino board and also monitor the serial. It's going into an ESP8266 Node MCU clone board. Uh, from there, we have two wires that feed over to our Serial Wombat 18AB board. Uh, they're feeding into the SDA and SCL lines for I squared C. They match up with the I squared C lines on the node MCU. And on this board, we have our two pull up resistors for the I squared C bus. The keyboard plugs into an adapter. I got a breakout board for the standard PS2 connector. On the back side of that, I've got the appropriate wires plugged in. I will warn you that when I bought this board, the numbers, the pins are numbered. They do not correspond to the official numbering of the PS2 adapter. So uh, be aware of that. You should own these out and figure out which pins go where. Don't just trust the adapter that you get. On here, I've got two pull-up resistors that go from 5 volts to the clock and data lines. The clock and data lines are feeding into pin 10 and pin 11 on my Serial Wombat uh, 18AB board. They come in right here, 10 and 11. And they are getting 5 volts from the VIN line on the uh, Node MCU. I've got a logic analyzer over here that we'll look at some signals with. And the grounds for these three for these four devices are all connected. Uh, like I said, 5 volt comes over here from here. 3.3 volts is being fed from the Node MCU board to power our Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Finally, for one of the examples, I have this buzzer. It's a 3 to 12 volt buzzer that buzzes at about 4,000 hertz when you apply power. I have the power plus line of that going to pin 19 on the Serial Wombat chip and the ground going to the Serial Wombat chip ground, which is the system ground. Uh, that chip that pulls a maximum of 7 milliamps, so it's well within the capability of the Serial Wombat chip's GPIO build. 
So let's take a look real quick at what happens when we push A, B, C, and we'll also push the home key. What we can see here is that different codes come through. I'm using the Sally A decoder, and we can see that we've got the make A code. And then when that key comes up, we get the break code followed by A. Then similarly, for B, C, and then finally, the interesting one here is make for the home. Uh, beyond what are typically ASCII keys, the most basic keys, those are what are called extended keys, and they come in two for, they come in two byte packets, E0 for extended, then some other uh, code that corresponds to those. So most keyboards that we use use what's called set two, and if you go looking around on the internet you'll find all kinds of different tables that say, oh, okay, these are the expected values. So we'll look at this one that I found at vetra.com. Uh, and it says the home key is E06C. So if we look at our logic again, and that agrees with that, E06C. Uh, if you would happen to push one key down, then another key, then let up the first key, you would get the make for both keys, then the break when the other key came up. The other interesting thing to look at is what happens when you hold a key down. I'm going to hold down the F key. And what we can see right there is that the keyboard itself issues the initial F then after a period of time, continues to issue make codes for the F command uh, until I finally let it up, at which point it issues a break for the F key. So repetition is controlled on the keyboard side, not on the host side. Another th interesting thing to know about the PS2 is that the clocking is done on the keyboard side for the most part. Whenever it issues a, has a key pressed, it will start clocking these lines. These are open collector lines, essentially kind of like the I2C bus. Normally they're held high by a pull-up, but anybody on the bus can pull them low. It's possible for the host or the, what would normally be the PC to send commands back to the keyboard. That's how you light up the various LEDs. However, the Serial Wombat firmware does not support that. Uh, the way that the Serial Wombat firmware works is it uses the DMA polling system that's described in this architecture video up above. You don't really need to know this, but some people are interested in how the Serial Wombat chip works. Uh, and so it's polling this guy 57,000 times per second. We can see that uh, that the frequency on this guy is on the order of about 25,000 hertz, so we can more than more than effectively sample uh, this this signal. And for us to be able to have the serial wombat chip side clock out uh, data right now is not is not practical. So it. It's only a one directional interface. So here's our first example sketch. And with this sketch, uh, as with our hardware before, we're going to have a serial Wombat chip that we instantiate. Uh, this is sketch uh, PS2 keyboard EX01 queuing. And we're going to have a second pin that is our data pin on Wombat pins 10 and 11. We will instantiate a Serial Wombat PS2 keyboard. I'm still in development right now. i got to update my uh, keywords file so that this turns orange. And we will call that my keyword, and we will uh, associate it with Serial Wombat chip SW. So our standard setup here, we're going to start up our I2C bus. We're going to start up the serial so that we can dump out information. Throw a half-second delay in there just as good practice. And then we will say, okay, this is a Serial Wombat PS2 keyboard example. It'll tell you which pins to connect up to. And we will say, uh, find the Serial Wombat, the first Serial Wombat chip that you find. Uh, let me know what the I2C address is. If we don't find one, uh, say show not found error. There's some other, some 
check stuff for you here in this other tab that you don't really have to worry about, but it checks to make sure that you have a compatible version and a compatible Serial Wombat chip. Uh, if we found a Serial Wombat chip and it passed our version check to be compatible with this pin mode, then uh, we open, we begin the Serial Wombat chip at that I squared C address. False tells it you don't need to do a reset. Uh, we'll say my keyboard begin. And in its simplest form, you just tell it which two pins that you're on, the clock first, then the data, and it automatically puts it into queued mode. Then we're gonna go into a loop and we're gonna say my keyboard read. The, my key, the PS2 keyboard class implements the Arduino stream class. So it's compatible with uh, you know, other streams like UARTs or you know, whatever. And so it says, okay, read, read returns a minus one if nothing is available. If something is available, then it returns that value. Uh, and in this case, it will be ASCII because that's what the pin mode is queuing up. So if it's greater than zero, we change that value to a character and print out the character, then read again to see if there's any more characters available to print. So let's open our serial monitor. And then we will do a uh, sketch upload. So now I can hit A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, some of the characters like return will look odd uh, there or backspace because of the way that the, the terminal interprets them. That's not a problem on the Serial Wombat side. That's a problem on the, the Arduino terminal side. Uh, if I hold down the shift key, the Serial Wombat chip will re remember that the shift is held until I release it. So we get capitals, I release the shift, we get lowercase. Uh, caps lock's not currently implemented, but the shift keys do work. Uh, so that's uh, about it for this example. For our second example, we'll go to File, Examples, Serial Wombat, 18AB, PS2 Keyboard, and we'll open example number two. This example is very similar to the previous ones, except in this case, we're going to open up MyKeyboard.Begin with the two pins, and then the next parameter is what we're going to queue, and the value two is all scan codes. And with as with all of the Arduino pin mode classes, they're documented uh, in the GitHub's doc, and we can look in here and we can say, okay, what are the begin parameters? The clock pin, the data pin, uh, what queue mode, what uh, buffer mode, and what pull down. So let's upload that. And again, we'll look at our serial monitor. The code in this case, there's a little bit of extra logic in here that basically tries to keep each key press on a separate line to help you understand what the various scan codes are. And just for fun, let's also start up the Salier so that it can see the scan codes that we see. So I'm going to hit and release A, hit and release B, hit and release C, and I'm going to hit the right button, and we can see some extended codes there. And then on top of this keyboard, this is a one of those keyboards from the time when they thought, oh, you'd like a button to refresh your uh, to refresh your your internet browser more than you'd like additional space for a coffee cup. So this. This is one of those huge keyboards. I'll hit one of those. You can see it has other extended codes. The weird, interesting buttons, volume up, volume down, ones that are later to the game and keyboards, those are all extended codes. So we can see what happens if we push the shift and release it. Uh, there's a code for that. If we hit enter, there's a code for that. So you can see the scan codes if that's something you're interested in. And there's also a method in the Arduino library that lets you turn those scan codes back into ASCII if that's something you care about. Let's take a look real quick at the scan codes that we saw. I'm gonna hit stop here. And we look at this last set and it was a break on the enter key and which it said was uh, 
F05A. And that lines up, we hit the 5A, which is enter, and then we got the break code F05A. So that's working properly. Finally, let's look at the last example. which is beep on press. The serial wombat chip, the 18AB has another pin mode called pulse on change. And each pin in the serial wombat uh, 18AB has a 16-bit piece of data that it outputs for consumption by other pins. And in some cases, like for an A to D converter, that might be the A to D conversion. Uh, for the serial wombat PS2 kin pin mode, by default, it outputs the last ASCII value it had. But it also has the ability to output a running count of how many keys have been pressed or actually how many make, key, make codes it's seen. And that can be used by the Serial Wombat Pulse on Change mode. The Pulse on Change pin mode is a mode that looks at the public data, either of public parameters like the number of packets received or errors or you know a periodic counter or things like that, or it could be uh, public data for a specific pin and when it sees that value increase or decrease or change or go above a threshold or whatever, it will generate a pulse depending on how it's configured. And those pulses are very useful for user interface things. In our case, we're going to use a buzzer that chirps. Uh, in other cases, you could use, like if you wanted a communication LED, you could monitor the number of packets received and each time you got a new packet, light up the LED for a fraction of a second. So. We've got pretty much the same example as the first one that did the queuing in the ASCII, but we've added this serial wombat pulse on change, and we have a buzzer on pin 19. So we're going through here, and we're going to say, okay, I want you to queue ASCII data, and I want you to implement uh, public data on each key press. Uh, this is a, a different than the standard one. So you can see we've got an extra parameter in our begin there. We're not using the, the default, which would be to, to put ASCII out. So this buzzer, which is defined on a pulse on change, we're going to say begin, and we're going to say uh, you are assigned, that is the pin you're going to pulse, is the buzzer pin, which is 19. And then for the pulse on change, it can take a number of different conditions for which it will generate a pulse. But we'll need one. We're going to say set entry on change. Uh, this is entry number zero. You could put, I forget, up to four or eight. I forget how many I, I programmed in there. But there can be a number of different conditions. The first condition, in this case, index zero, is simply a change on the PS2 clock pin. There's a lot of more, lot more parameters you can do uh, with this that determine whether it goes high or low or how long and how long to wait between pulses and a lot of configurability. But the most common usage where you just want to generate a chirp or an LED light, uh, you can use most of the default parameters. So we're going to do it on the buzzer pin. It's going to output on the buzzer pin, but it's going to make, pay attention to the PS2 clock pin, uh, which has been configured to output the number of make codes it's seen as its, as its output. Uh, so let's upload that. Okay, so if we hit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, you can hear it beeping each time. If I hold down the A key, it'll beep each time a make code is sent by the keyboard. Uh, one thing I don't like as much is if I push and release the shift key, I also get a beep that's not, you might like it to be just limited to the, to the letter keys, but uh, that wasn't practical as a, a pin mode. Uh, so... You know, hit a key, you get a audio feedback. So that's what that's designed to do. For our next example, let's take a look at a sketch which allows you to use the keyboard as if it is a game or real-time controller. We're going to open the PST keyboard example number four. And what this one does is essentially it's pretty similar to the prior example. It has the same buzzer and keyboard and uh, there's one change in the initialization. Instead of uh, queuing scan codes or ASCII codes, we're going to have it internally create a bit field of held keys, and then you'll be able to query whether or not a given key is being pressed. So uh, you can see we come down into our loop, uh, and we check 
uh, we'll check for a handful of codes, the up and down arrow, left and right arrow, the number one key in the space bar. And depending on which of those is held or multiple may be held, we will output different letters or numbers on the command line. If any of them are held, held then we'll uh, print a line at the end of the loop, then we'll go through and do it again. So we'll be able to see which keys are held in real time. You could then take this and, you know, instead of printing out a data, uh, add or subtract to a number that's maybe driving a PWM or that you're feeding in as a servo controller or, you know, lighting up lights or who knows, you know, whatever you wanted to do as a, a real time control. It would be very good, you know, if you were playing a game or something like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our serial monitor and let's do a sketch upload. Okay, if I push the one key, we get ones as long as it's held. If I push the space bar, we get space as long as it's held. And note that this is a result of the logic in the Arduino sketch, not a result of the repeated uh, push aspect. So left, right, up, down. If I hold down two of them at the sign, you can see that. If I hold down three of them, we get them all. Can we do four? Yeah, we can do four. So this is working effectively. We could, you know, drive a car or, you know, position a servo or do whatever we wanted to do there. That's the last of our examples for right now. I hope you found this interesting, learned a little bit about how PS2 keyboards work, and uh, have enjoyed these examples for use with the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. I enjoy making these videos. If you like it, please hit like. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in getting more information about the Serial Wombat chip. I recommend this for all current users because this is how I distribute new information uh, about the chip. If you're using the PS2 keyboard mode, uh, please leave me a comment down below or even better, send me some pictures and a description or a video of your project to help at SerialWombat.com. I'm always interested in seeing what people are up to and I love to feature uh, user projects in videos in the future. So that's all I have for now. Hope you guys are having fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IESA 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.